Hello everyone and welcome back to computer vision lecture series. This is lecture 3 part 2. We will continue talking about image filters. Uh, in this part we are specifically going to talk about nonlinear filters. So let's start. In the previous lecture we saw how linear fil filters can be convolved across images and we can generate different kind of um, outputs depending on what we are looking for. We saw uh, Gaussian filters to be one of the very useful filters which are separable as well as can be convolved with multiple filters are, uh, and also we saw how um, different um, examples of uh, box filter as well as uh, Sobel filters that can be applied using convolutional operators. Uh, in this lecture we are talking about nonlinear filters. Some filters like median morphological operations they can they are considered to be nonlinear uh, filters. We are also going to look into a fun application uh, called simulating tilt photography. So tilt photography is an actual art uh, in photography but we can also fake it and we will see how we can do that. So what are median filters? Median filters you take um, it operates over a range or, or window or predefined window. Uh, you calculate the values, you sort the values and then you take the medium intensity in that video. So when you sort the uh, pixel values in the neighborhood uh, in the de defined neighborhood of the median filter uh, you're basically doing a nonlinear operation and therefore median filtering is considered to be a nonlinear operation um, rank filter also works in, in, in some similar sense and therefore it is also considered a median filter um, the questions that comes to your mind first is uh, how different is median filter from the mean uh, filter is median filter a kind of convolution but as we saw that when uh, you apply median filter it takes um, it sorts the intensity values and then takes the median value and therefore it is by inherently a non-linear uh, operation a non-linear filter however when you apply median filters you are doing actually convolution um, this is an example of salt and pepper noise salt and pepper uh, noise is considered this white and black dots which, which are spread across the images now um, if you want to remove this noise, what do we do? We can start with applying a mean filtering like we did in the previous um, uh, example in the previous lecture where we saw we can apply mean filtering or for smoothing out the images. So let's start by applying mean filter here. Uh, when we apply a mean filter of uh, 3 cross 3 uh, window size, uh, the noise is still there. Although the images uh, resolution or the quality is reduced and it is a bit also uh, smoothed over however we see also that the noise of salt and pepper is also a little bit reduced so let's apply a bigger uh, sized uh, mean filter and see if it uh, if you if we, if we are able to get rid of the salt and pepper noise in this case we are actually um, getting rid of the the salt and pepper noise however the image quality is severely reduced so what is the solution here here we see that um, this is the original salt and pepper noisy uh, image. Uh, let's try to see if median filtering works. So when you apply a median filter of 3 cross 3, uh, in a 3 cross 3 uh, salt and pepper noises can, uh, in a median filtering what you did was, uh, what we do, do is you arrange the intensity values from increasing to decreasing and because salt and pepper noises are high frequency noises, they are black and white in nature. When you uh, when you when you keep uh, when you arrange this intensity values the salt and pepper pixel values will be in the extremes uh, of this range and therefore when you choose the middle or the median value uh, uh, the you, you are uh, practically not choosing the uh, the salt and pepper noises uh, let's apply a bit larger filter here we see in this case also the image has been smoothed a little but when you apply a bigger filter size the image smooths out uh, a bit more uh, we can also say that we have over smoothed the image another example of nonlinear filtering is morphological operations morphological operations are con are called a so called because they change the inherent shape of the object on which you are applying so morphological operations are very good for binary images when we want to uh, change the or remove certain aspects of that image for example here in this case dilation and erosion are one of the two import, most important um, morphological operations and they can be applied on binary image here you can see that this is the original image here um, 
in case of morphological operations also because um, it's also a convolution but we use a structuring element so you apply this structuring element across this original image and when you dilate it or um, erode it you're doing a thresholding operation and in essence and when you are doing the thresholding operation you are practically uh, that is a nonlinear operation and therefore morphological operations are considered to be nonlinear uh, filtering operation here is an example of dilation and erosion this is our original image with the structuring element of a, a square of um, 2 cross 2 size when you apply across this original image you basically grow the edges dilation grows the edges and the sh in general the shape of the input image whereas erosion gets rid of that based on the size or the shape size and the shape of the structuring element so here in this case we see uh, that uh, when you apply this dilation operation across this original image it grows this uh, horizontal uh, the width of uh, the height of this horizontal line whereas for erosion it gets completely rid of that line and it also shifts the vertical line uh, not shifts it um, removes the top and the bottom uh, sorry the top of the top pixel value in erosion operation um, closing and opening are also one of uh, another type of morphological operations basically in closing what you do is when you have an original image and here in our case in this case um, this is your structuring uh, element and when you apply this structuring element for closing it basically closes the small holes that are present inside the image so when you this is the output of the closing operation you see that these holes are, uh, are disappeared this is also also disappears as well as some part of the top uh, here also disappears that is closing operation whereas in opening it removes small portions depending on the size or and shape of their structuring element in this case this is a structuring element so when you apply it across this whole image it gets rid of these arms as you can see in the output image it also gets rid of this uh, output here as well and when you come uh, and when you uh, when the operation of opening is followed by closing you you are able to generate this so basically morphological operations can be uh, applied in different combinations depending on what you want to achieve uh, connected components what is connected components connected components is basically you're finding uh, regions which um, with predefined pixel values and you find which regions follow these pixels uh, this is also a, a, thre a thresholding operation because you choose um, in advance what kind of thresholding you want to apply for finding this connected region this is an example of uh, Greek ancient was this is um, from our work that we are doing at a pattern recognition lab this is an input image and you want to find different connected regions in this uh, image so you apply this connected component uh, uh, using your thresholds and you find different regions of the image which are uh, connected for example in the top uh, and in the uh, in the middle part of the image the blue color is um, considered to be one connected component similarly black regions are considered to be one connected component uh, at the bottom of this uh, was you see that there is um, some edges which are also highlighted as different connected components Let's see how, so we are, uh, what is uh, tilt shift photography basically? We want to see uh, an example of uh, filtering, basically how filtering is useful and can be applied in uh, real world scenarios. So tilt shift photography is a style or is a, is a form of photography where you tilt and shift your um, camera so that you are able to capture images such that they look like uh, toys. So when you look at this image, um, this region of the image is highlighted and another part of the images are blurred out so it looks like they are toys same in this case as well this part of the image is highlighted or is in more uh, is not blurred whereas when you go away from this region the image becomes blurred and it looks like toys similarly this however this is not a toy this is a real life uh, train uh, whereas all these three sorry my mistake uh, all these three are actual images whereas this is an actual toy uh, so tilt shift photography can be applied to any real world images as well as um, uh, toy images but can we fake it and uh, we want to see how it works in order to fake it 
So you see here um, the, the sensor, um, so it depends on how your camera sensors receive the input light. So if you tilt and shift your camera, um, different uh, part, um, lights from different regions of your input image uh, or if your input source, input scene will arrive at sensor at different uh, time and because of that it will be blurred and it will generate um, images that we saw before something like this and can we fake it that's the main uh, main uh, main uh, main question that we want to ask as we saw that um, tilt shift photography generates images with uh, different blurred regions so essentially what we have to do is we have to find out regions where we want to highlight and then slowly and increasingly blur the remaining part of the region and why we are talking about tilt shift photography we are talking about it because we learned about convolution operation right and we saw how different filters nonlinear and linear can be used to uh, generate uh, very interesting output images so if we have a filter of this kind where in the middle um, there is a so in the middle there is a, a fixed values um, and as you go away from the middle the the values decrease or uh, the blur increases and if we apply this kind of filter over this image we will be able to generate um, a fake tilt shift uh, image something like this so we can also use a combination of uh, different methods that we have already learned so what do you do if you have a, an input image like this you convert it into a hsv uh, color space hue saturation and value you boost the saturation value here so that you get more colors in the output image and then you apply the um, uh, blurring operation and then you save it back to rgb and at the end the Im in, uh, image looks like this something like this so when you applied the the um, filter over the or your input image in the middle the um, the image looks very resolved whereas as you go away from the middle section of the image it becomes more and more blurred and this is a very good example of tilt shift photography and that's it from uh, image filtering perspective we saw different uh, linear and non-linear filters so next time whenever you are using convolution operators or whenever you are using filtering think about it for once whether you are applying a non-linear operation or a linear operation the reason is because if you if your operation is linear then you can actually use different properties of linear filters as we discussed uh, commutative associative uh, linear separ uh, separability of the kernels and that can save you a lot of computations depending on what kind of filters you are using uh, so it is important to know uh, these things when you are applying the filtering operations and that's it for Im uh, image filtering in the next uh, part of this uh, lecture we will talk about how we can manipulate or we can modify images using the frequency domain how different frequencies of um, can be used to do filtering operations as well um, thank you very much.